Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we have a fun collaboration video of what would you make. This collaboration always challenges me to look deep into my stash of goodies and find some wood projects to work on. And I think I found two that I really love today. This collaboration is put on by Connie's Wood Shop and DIYs, Rustic and Lace DIY, and the guest host is crafting with Indiana Jones. This is every month on the fourth Sunday of every month and I really love doing this collaboration. There will be a playlist down in my description and also linked or pinned to my comments at the top. So if you're interested in checking out the other uh, several collaborators that will be in this. They are so creative and I know that you're going to be inspired. All right, let's get creating. Okay, my friend, I saw her today. Her name is Karen and she has a booth at the same flea market as I do. And she gave me this roll of wallpaper border. And I think it's pre-glued. Pre so I think all you have to do is add water but I'm gonna use Mod Podge on this. I've used these several times in several different ways. I just liked how this one was separated. So you have thanks over here, the little salt box house. You got another salt box house with some sheep. This one has a cat and some sunflowers and the pineapple at the top. This one has the roses, the sheep, the box, the palm trees, can't even think of the word, palm trees sunflowers salt box house these are doves up here and they say thanks love peace and then praise has the church the roses the angel blowing the horn up top i absolutely love each and every one of these so instead of doing a whole piece of like taking the whole thing what i did was measured the uh each individual section this lengthwise and widthwise to find out how long and how wide I needed to make some little pieces of wood so that I can attach these on there and just make little little signs for displays. Little primitive signs. I thought they would be really cute. So I made them a little bit smaller because I think I'm going to maybe distress a little bit around the edges, maybe rip it. I'm not really sure exactly yet what I'm gonna do. So I got these pieces of wood done. I cut them out on my uh, table saw and then sanded them with my uh, sander, my table sander, which I love by the way. If you get a chance to get a table sander, get one. It's absolutely wonderful. So this, the pieces of wood that I'm using are scrap wood. So these are just pine and I, you know, I have to pick and choose because the piles that we get are not very good. So a lot of them are kindling for the wood stove, but a lot of them I can make small projects uh, out of pieces that are broken all around it, but I've got a small piece that I can cut out of. So that's why I decided to do these. And so I cut them out and sanded them down, rounded over the edges. And then what I'm going to do is the other side is the rough side. I did sand it. But I think what I'm going to do is use that side as my side that I'm going to put my wallpaper on. And that way this side will be perfect. So you don't have to worry about splinters or anything like that. Whereas this side, it has been sanded, but it's a little fuzzy in spots. But what I'm going to do first is, so this is going to be my front where I'm going to put my paper. I'm going to paint all around the edge and the back and I think I'm just going to use black. There's going to be a little primitive uh, wood sign so I want it to be black. I'll probably distress and then I may come back with some antique wax once I distress and go over that and so my wood, my raw wood when it comes through I can wax that and it looks like a stain and darkens up that wood. I got some new paint brushes. I'll put a link down in the description. I got them off Amazon they had a little bit of a deal and I needed some new paint brushes. I'm really hard on my brushes. They, um, you know, I wash them, but sometimes they just, 
they they just get used a lot so they don't um, I don't know, always wash up the greatest after a few hundred uses so every once in a while I have to just spring for some new brushes which is what I've done here now I think I'm just gonna do the back and the sides for right now I've got to decide if I'm going to rip the paper or if it's gonna be just and they don't all have to be exactly the same this one I think I'll just do the sides and the back that you're gonna be able to see there we go all right I got all four of them painted and dried with the dryer so now I'm just gonna Go along the edges and the corners. This is going to be the back. So, and just hit it with a little bit. So, just give that a little bit of a sand, and then when you can, where you can see the raw wood. What I'm going to do is take the antique wax and use it as a stain and go over it. It will also seal it in. Okay, next thing I have is the Waverly Antique Wax. And I'm just going to put that all over what I just painted and sanded. So this is going to give it a nice seal coat. And it's going to take those raw edges that I sanded down to the raw wood and stain them so they're a little bit brown and distressed looking instead of painting instead of antique waxing the whole thing before i painted it all right i'm just gonna wipe it back all right so that's what it looks like with i mean of course it's still wet but can you see how it stained that part that was raw wood? It's kind of darkened it. Let me get one here. Can you see the difference there? This is the raw wood one, and this is the one that's got the wax on it. Now I can stop putting my fingers on it and getting fingerprints all over it. But we'll just set that aside and let it dry, and I'll do the other three. Then I think I'll finally be able to put Mod Podge on here and put my little signs on. Okay, I also wanted to show you these three have got the antique wax on them and this one has not been done. So you can see that it's got the stained lines on it on the edges. Can you see the difference there? Definitely can see the difference. And then I don't know, it just doesn't show it very well. And it's not a huge difference, but this is the waxed one. And I think using the wax on the black paint gives it a deeper look. And it also, when you sand it, it looks dry. See how it's got like the white chalky look? When you put the, these aren't dry yet, so I really should wait till it's dry because it's kind of streaky. But it, um, let's see if that one's a little more. It just gives it a more conditioned look too. So it doesn't have that dry streaky look like this one does. So hopefully you can see the difference there and in what I'm trying to do with my line. So instead of taking the antique wax originally uh, on this wood and then painting it black and then sanding it, because sanding it, more than likely I will get, I'll take off the antique wax too. So this way, conditioning my black, making it look, you know, giving it a nice seal, making it look good, and I'm making my edges nice and brown so they look distressed and more primitive okay got all my blocks done got them all painted black and then added the antique wax now we're going to use mod podge maybe and we're going to add this to the front now i think this is pre-pasted Let's see what it says. It says, yes, pre-pasted vinyl washable strippable wall covering. But I, in my 
experience, this does not stick very well. Sometimes it's because it's old. Sometimes it's just the, it doesn't want to attach to whatever you're trying to put it on. So we're going to just use Mod Podge because I know Mod Podge works. Giving it a good coat all over. And then we're going to take our paper and put it on straight as we can. Wallpaper border is pretty thick. It's made of vinyl. So usually you can really work with it, really rubbing it, getting it down. And then you're gonna see I've got some of my edges are gonna need to be cut. That's fine. We can sand them off or we can use a razor blade. But there, there's that one. And then let's do the rest. Now, if you're familiar with working with um, wallpaper, then you know that it bubbles. So if you're not familiar with working with wallpaper, it bubbles. Sometimes you'll get a bubble underneath. And a lot of times you have to just work it out. You have to get it to go out the side. Or you can take a sharp um, razor blade and you just poke a little hole in it and then just kind of work the air out kind of like a as pimple, I guess. I hate to use that analogy, but it's kind of like that. And it just kind of pushes the air out when you do that. And then you just put your hand over it or, or you could use a roller um, and it just works it out. See, there's a little bubble there and you just kind of got to, it, it will suck down, but a lot of times those bubbles will stay sometimes if they're bad enough. Um, so you got to kind of like work it out so it goes out the edge or like I said pop it but these feel pretty good there's a couple little spots okay so I trimmed I trimmed these off. I guess I got a little impatient because they're still a little wet underneath. And so when I cut it, that it grabbed on and just kind of teared it. So in the tear parts, what I'm gonna do, because it's white and I don't want white, I want a distressed look. I'm just taking some antique wax and going around those edges. and it's gonna make it look distressed. So there, so I don't have those white edges on there anymore. Over here I had it too, and I put the antique wax on. Here's another one where it ripped a little bit. So I'm just gonna take my antique wax and put it on the ripped parts. And then put that on there and see how it the antique wax gets, wax gets in there. So it's a little bit chewed up around the edges, which I hadn't planned on, but like I said, I rushed it. But that's okay. We're gonna make, we're gonna make it look good. That antique wax, I don't know what I would do without it, I'll tell you. So, there, see, I'm just gonna go all along 
and it just makes the paper look old and and kind of brown see it's not completely dry because there's a bit of mod podge there but it just makes it look aged which I love anyway I again I didn't plan on it but when I was cutting it evidently it just because it was still kind of wet under there it grabbed on and tore the paper and it actually I'm glad because then I can just go along with this and make it look aged. local uh, secondhand shop and I didn't find anything in the shop to buy but out back by the dumpster I found a table that was falling apart and I saw these legs and I absolutely love them and so I went back in and I said are you going to throw that table away and she said yes and I said do you mind if I take it and she said absolutely I would love it if you take it so we don't have to take it to the dump That'll save us a trip. And I was like, this would have gone to the dump. These are real wood. They're heavy. They're, I don't know what they're made out of. They, I don't think it's pine. It's probably like a maple or something like that. But um, I want to make some really nice uh, candlesticks with these. I think they will be beautiful candlesticks. But I got to get rid of this part. And I want to make them staggered as far as their the heights of them now i have four of these but i'm only going to be do two today i'm going to make a base for these and then i think i have some rounds from 24 hour crafts that i can put on top that i can put a candle on but first i'm going to cut these down and get rid of these holes probably up here and i'll be able to use this for something else i'll fill those in at another time but right now i just want to uh use this bigger part here. Okay, so I got these cut down different heights. So they will stagger a little bit. I got my little blocks cut out. And then instead of cutting out some circles for the top, I'm going to use these. I got some nice thick circles. These are from 24 Hour Crafts. I have a affiliate a link and a discount code if you want to get one of these or anything that they have on their website. It's, they've got so many cool things. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'll have that down in my description uh, and linked in my comments below. So first thing that I'm going to do is take all my raw wood and I'm going to use the antique wax as a stain and I'm going to put it on my raw wood. Wipe it off. And then it looks just like my spindles. It'll stain up really nice. It'll stain up really nice. Very good. So those match those really good. I'm going to let that dry. We'll do this one. 
So I'm just showing you here, I'm going to take a drill bit and make a little indentation for my screw head to go into when I screw it into the bottom of my candlestick. So I'm just going to screw that in and then that the head of that screw will go down inside just a little bit so that it doesn't stop it from sitting flat on the table. Okay, I didn't get any video of this, but I did the same thing. You just put a screw in the top and just made it go down past the wood a little bit. These are nice and soft, like little pine pieces. So the screw went right in there and went down below and that way when I put a candle on there or whatever I decide they will um, they'll sit flat so you won't be able to see those now I'm trying to decide whether I want to paint these I actually don't mind the way they look the antique wax matches it really well actually um, and I'm thinking I might just leave them this stained look it's kind of rustic and um, I just kind of like it and then later on if I want to paint it I can I hope you enjoyed my What Would You Make projects today. The collab link will be down in my description so you can check out all of the creators that are on the playlist. You're going to be inspired. I know it. They're great people. Check out the links to my paintbrushes that I purchased. They worked really well. This was the first time using them and I really liked how they work. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and have a great day.